you just finished viewing the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film on Netflix. And if you were clever, you stuck around until the end to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre after credit sequence. Now your mind is racing, and you're asking yourself, what does it all mean? What does it all mean? Says the narrator, of all. For the majority of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's 83-minute runtime, it's not that deep. Leatherface wields a massive chainsaw and murders people with it. You don't even need to have seen the other seven films in the genre because the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre is regarded a direct sequel to the 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For the sake of this new film, they are not considered canon. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre end credits scene, on the other hand, may catch you off guard, or maybe you just want to know who survives by skipping ahead. Whatever your motivation, here's all you need to know about the movie's post credit scene. Melody is a young San Francisco entrepreneur with a plan to convert a near ghost town in rural Texas into a wealthy elitist tourism and real estate destination. Leela, her younger sister, is dragged along with her to a meeting with possible investors in town. Melody is hoping that Leela would join her in Texas so that they can be together after a tragic tragedy at her school. When Melody, Leela, and their pals arrive in Harlow, Texas, they find something in the town that their investors don't want them to see a confederate flag. They attempt to get rid of it. They presume the house flying it is abandoned, so when an elderly woman asks what they are doing in her home, they are taken aback. The elderly lady offers delicious tea to her unexpected visitors. She claims the house is an ancient orphanage she used to run for over 50 years. The old lady becomes distraught when Melody hesitantly informs her that the house has been seized by the bank and that she must go. A frightening person arrives in the stairway while the old lady is frightened. His face is hidden from view. The elderly lady instructs the man to return to his room since she is alright. She informs Melody, he's the last of my guys. He need particular attention. I can't be here since he doesn't do well outside. When the cops arrive to evict the elderly woman, she falls in terror. The same hulking figure from earlier grabs her and transports her to the hospital in a police car. Jessica Allen, who plays Melody's friend, volunteers to accompany them to the hospital so that she may inform Melody that the woman is well. Leela gets a horrifying glimpse of the towering figure's face and shadow as they drive away. And all she sees is an eye. That menacing figure, as you may have surmised, is none other than Leatherface. Aka the chainsaw-wielding killer initially depicted by Gunnar Hansen in the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Leatherface embarks on a violent spree after the orphanage mother dies on the route to the hospital, murdering everyone in the vehicle with his chainsaw. The rest of the film follows Leatherface as he tries to find Melody whom he plainly blames for his surrogate mother figure's death. Sally Hardesty, the sole survivor of Leatherface's homicidal spree 50 years ago, receives word that Leatherface has returned. She brings weapons to Harlow in the hopes of finally defeating him. With his chainsaw, Leatherface hacks up a number of people, and eventually just Melody and Leela are left of their pals. Sally arrives with her vehicle at precisely the appropriate time, but instead of driving away, she insists that they wait until Sally can murder Leatherface. Leatherface, however, has the upper hand and leaves Sally practically dead in the street. Melody and Leela are being pursued by Leatherface. They make an attempt to hit him with the van, but it crashes. Melody, who is stuck in the van, encourages Leela to go and leave her behind. Leela agrees, but later returns to try to shoot Leatherface. She's out of bullets, but thankfully, Sally comes and shoots Leatherface in the shoulder with the last of her power. Explained ending. A dying person Sally warns Leela not to flee. If you flee, he'll never stop haunting you. But instead of assisting her sister in fleeing, Leela pursues Leatherface inside the abandoned theater, armed with a rifle. There's a pool of water in this auditorium for some reason, and Leatherface assaults Leela and nearly drowns her. Leela eventually drags herself out of the water, but Leatherface has the upper hand. Melody, her sister, appears out of nowhere and leaps on him just as he's about to slice her up with his chainsaw. With her last round, Leela hits Leatherface in the stomach. Melody then takes up the chainsaw and slices him through the middle, albeit a shallow one. Leatherface is knocked unconscious and falls into the sea. We notice bubbles at first, indicating that he is still breathing, but the bubbles gradually stop, indicating that he is dead. Is Leatherface finally extinguished for good? Nope. Leela and Mel get into their expensive automobile and put on autopilot mode in the film's last scene. Leatherface emerges out of nowhere and snatches Mel through the passenger window as the car begins to move away. While Leela cries from the car that is still going away on autopilot, he beheads her in the street with his chainsaw. After the credit scenes, is there a Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes. You may see Leatherface walking down a dusty road with his chainsaw approaching a lovely little home with a windmill if you wait until the very end of the credits. Explaining the Texas Chainsaw Massacre post credit scene. Leatherface is on his way to a residence that would be familiar to loyal Texas Chainsaw fans. It's Leatherface's house, Ack of the early 1,900 seconds farmhouse where the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 
was shot, Leatherface, his brother, and their grandfather resided at the house in the original film. In the first film, Leatherface's brother is said to have been slain, while he and other members of Leatherface's family did appear in subsequent films. It's crucial to understand that the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre was meant as a direct sequel to the 1974 picture, and the creators do not consider the previous films to be canon. Even then, you know how slashers go, no one ever actually dies. Is this a hint that more Texas Chainsaw flicks are on the way? as well as a reunion between Leatherface and his brother. To discover out, we'll have to wait and watch. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out latest video of Media Breakdown. They'll get into their expensive automobile and put on autopilot mode in the film's last scene. Leatherface emerges out of nowhere and snatches Mel through the passenger window as the car begins to move away. While Leela cries from the car that is still going away on autopilot, he beheads her in the street with his chainsaw. After the credit scenes, is there a Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes. You may see Leatherface walking down a dusty 